Metformin, which is a medication that I prescribe to my type 2 diabetics, had great promise as a way to extend lifespan, and it's a molecule that I personally took. We had my data published in 2008, showing a 37.8% increase in lifespan, and in 2014, we had observational human data showing that diabetics who were taking metformin appeared to live 15% longer compared with matched individuals without diabetes. Since that initial promise though, data has steadily trickled through, suggesting that metformin for non-diabetic patients probably won't extend lifespan, and towards the end of 2021, we had a high-quality, long-term human trial that convinced me to stop taking metformin. So let's go through the initial data that generated the excitement around metformin, then the steady trickle of disappointing data, and then we'll finish up by having a deep look into this long-term human trial. Let's get into it. Let's start by taking a closer look at the 2008 paper showing that metformin slows down aging and extends the lifespan of SHR mice. Now, I'm a medical doctor, so I've had to educate myself about how preclinical trials work, particularly the different types of mice that are used in these trials. So when we're talking about SHR mice, what does that actually mean? So SHR mice are spontaneously hypertensive rats. So first of all, they're inbred rats, and they've got a particular set of genes that causes them to have high blood pressure. So yes, in these mice, metformin will extend lifespan, but that doesn't really correlate to human data. We are not inbred, and most of us don't have particular genes that causes us to have high blood pressure. So we need to tread carefully when interpreting this data. Which brings me on to the Interventions Testing Program. This is a program that uses genetically heterogeneous mice. So the mice are not inbred and they're genetically diverse. So it more closely resembles the general human population. They also test each molecule at three separate sites. So this is to make sure that the results that they get are reproducible, that we're not just seeing a quirk from a particular lab. And in 2016, the interventions testing program, they turned their attention to metformin, and they found that metformin did not significantly extend lifespan. So this is the creme de la creme of preclinical work, and it suggests that metformin, it won't extend lifespan. So that's the preclinical work. What does the human data show? Well, starting with a study published in 2005 from the British Medical Journal, it suggests that any exposure to metformin, it reduced cancer rates by around 21%. In 2014, we had an observational human trial that suggests that people who did not take metformin, they had a 15% lower survival rate compared to diabetic people who did take metformin. One of the crucial things that I need to highlight about this paper is that it's an observational paper. So it's looking in the rearview mirror, and the trouble with that is that we can have a lot of different factors that can influence the data. And we'll dive a bit deeper into that later on in the video. But still, from 2014, the human data is looking extremely promising for metformin. So how does metformin actually work? Well, one of the mechanisms is that it activates an enzyme called AMPK. Now, AMPK is heavily involved in the responses to exercise. So that led some researchers to think, would metformin interfere with exercise benefits? And in 2019, a troubling paper was published. So this paper wanted to look at the combination of metformin and exercise. The trouble is though, metformin, it seemed to stop the benefits of exercise. So the participants undertook 12 weeks of exercise training and metformin, it seemed to blunt the positive effects on VO2 max by around 50%. So this just means that people who weren't taking metformin were receiving the full benefit, but those taking metformin only received about half of the benefit. Metformin also seemed to blunt the positive effects on strength training. So after looking at this data, I made the decision to only take metformin on rest days. I didn't want metformin to be getting in the way of my exercise training. Now, ideally, I'd want to be exercising around five to six times a week. So that means that I'm only taking metformin once to twice a week. So a significant reduction from what I used to do. So the preclinical work isn't looking too promising, and we've got good human data suggesting that metformin should not be taken 
on exercise days. And that leads us onto this 2021 paper that I only just became aware about in the past couple of weeks. It's a long-term paper that started in 1996 and it involved over 3,000 adults at high risk for type 2 diabetes. This is important because if we're going to see a positive effect for already healthy people when they take metformin, we should see even greater benefits if we take metformin for high-risk individuals. The participants were divided into three separate groups, one with intensive lifestyle intervention, the other one with metformin, or the other one placebo. Overall, they were followed up for 21 years, so again, this is a long-term human trial, and here's what they found. Although metformin, it prevented diabetes, it did not reduce all-cause cancer or cardiovascular death rates. This is a crucial finding, so we're going to spend a lot of time diving into the details about this paper. Metformin does have evidence for lifespan and health span extension in animal models, but like we've gone through, that evidence is shaky. In addition, there's numerous observational studies that suggest that metformin may reduce the risk of all-cause cardiovascular and cancer death rates among people with type 2 diabetes, and we've gone through that data already. A recent trial from the UK shows that adults with newly diagnosed diabetes, it does demonstrate positive effects of metformin in lowering the death rates. So this is why for my type 2 diabetic patients, I still prescribe metformin. It's the number one choice. However, no trial has evaluated the effect of metformin on all-cause death rates in a population of adults at high risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Because diabetes increases the risk of all-cause cancer and cardiovascular death rates, we hypothesized that metformin it should lower the risk for all-cause cancer and cardiovascular death rates. So the authors started this trial with the idea that metformin would lower the death rates for high-risk individuals. So let's go through the trial. From 1996, over 3,000 adults aged over 25 years old were enrolled in this trial involving 27 different clinical sites. To be included in this trial, they had to be either overweight or have high fasting blood sugar levels. One group took metformin 850 milligrams twice a day with the standard diet and exercise recommendations or a placebo twice daily again with the standard diet and exercise recommendations. From 1996 to 2001, the trial it was stopped because the primary outcome of figuring out would metformin lower the rates of newly diagnosed diabetes, it was successful, so in my pre-diabetic patients I do prescribe them metformin because I want to reduce the chances that they will develop full-blown type 2 diabetes. But here's the interesting thing about this trial. Those people who did not develop type 2 diabetes, the group that were already on metformin were continued on metformin, and those who weren't taking metformin, they didn't receive it. And they wanted to see, would those taking metformin who did not develop type 2 diabetes, would they have lower rates of death? We had over 2,500 people continue this trial, and they were offered quarterly lifestyle sessions. Those people originally randomized to metformin, they continued taking the metformin. And over the 21-year period that the trial ran, we had 453 deaths from the trial population. And here's what they found. There was no difference between metformin and placebo groups in the risk of all-cause, cardiovascular, and cancer death rates. This is a crucial finding, and I do want to repeat it. So for people who are at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes, the all-cause death rate, it did not differ between metformin and placebo. Although metformin, it was associated with reductions in several risk factors for heart disease, those interventions did not actually lower the death rates from heart disease. Cancer was the leading cause of death in the study population, but metformin, it did not reduce the risk of cancer death rates compared to placebo. This trial is unique in its ability to examine the effect of metformin on all-cause and cause-specific death rates in a study population at high risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And again, this is so important because if we're going to see a benefit for otherwise healthy people when they use metformin, we should see an even greater benefit for high risk people. But from this long-term human data, again, that's forward looking, we don't see any benefit by taking metformin. So why is there a difference between this forward looking trial and the observational data where we're looking in the rearview mirror? 
Well, let's go through some of the reasons. Past observational findings, they may differ from our results due to potential confounding because some patients who are on metformin, they're probably healthier compared to the comparison groups being treated with other anti-diabetic medications. Although the observational studies attempted to account for these different factors, there still could be residual confounding factors by diabetes duration, severity, and complications. Overall, I want to try and sum things up. For my pre-diabetic or early diabetic patients, I still prescribe them metformin. And for my type 2 diabetic patients, I definitely prescribe metformin. It's still the first line. But here we can see from this long-term trial that people who are at high risk for developing diabetes, so they're not yet early diabetic patients, there was no benefit seen. So there doesn't appear to be a strong reason to take metformin. So the preclinical work from the interventions testing program, it doesn't support taking metformin. And this long-term human data doesn't support taking metformin either. And the problem with metformin is that it does appear to interfere with exercise benefits. There is a trial called the TAME trial. So it's the targeted aging with metformin trial. So what they're trying to figure out is would giving metformin to otherwise healthy people give lifespan benefits. But coming back to this 2021 paper, we've already got the data. We've got high-risk individuals who were taking metformin compared to placebo, and there wasn't any benefit. Truth be told, I'm a bit gutted about this because I was holding metformin in high hope. The observational data supported it, and the initial preclinical work in mice also supported taking metformin. So it's disappointing to see that metformin hasn't panned out. Yes, we can always wait for more data to come through, but for me, the preclinical work, it doesn't support taking metformin, and this 2021 trial is a long-term trial, forward-looking, and it's placebo-controlled. We didn't see any benefit. So I've made the decision to stop taking metformin. And that's all we can do. We can only react to the latest high quality data. So please let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video and what you're going to do about metformin. Are you going to continue taking metformin on rest days or are you going to stop metformin like I have? And a massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. And please make sure to check out my clinical trial fundraiser for rapamycin. And until next time, thanks very much.